Hello folks, I hope you're all doing well. I am back. It's been a couple of weeks since I put a video out. Apologies for that. Life in general has just been a bit busy for the last couple of weeks. My sister-in-law Julie and my lovely niece Maya are here visiting us from all the way from Melbourne in Australia for a few weeks. So the weekend just gone. We had a long weekend away with all my sort of in-law side of the family. There was about 20 of us away in this one big massive house in a place called Bonnie Bridge. That was a little bit chaotic, but really, really nice to have everybody all in one place. And before that, I was down in London for about a week with work at a conference and doing various different bits and pieces. And you know what? It was £7.50 for a pint in one of the pubs we went into. I couldn't believe it, £7.50 for one pint in London. So I'm, I'm in no hurry to, to, to be going back there anytime soon, that's, that's for sure. And just everything else, just in general, so, 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 so busy. But I'm back, and we're back in the greenhouse. I'm in the greenhouse for a reason. So the allotment for the last couple of weeks has just been in sort of maintenance mode. I've only been there a couple of times just to do a little bit of watering when it's been dry. The weather's been a bit weird. We had absolutely torrential rain at the weekend. There was floods all over Scotland in different places. And just now as I'm filming, I'm squinting because the sun's come out. It's in comedy timing that just as I'm starting to film and there's grey clouds everywhere up there, the sun has decided to shine right in my eyes. And it's just, just gone away there as quick as it's appeared. But anyway, we've got a job to do. And I'm doing it now because temperatures are set to plummet this weekend. So up here in Scotland again, I don't know about the rest of the UK, I've not really looked yet. We're going to be down to around about one degree overnight, sort of Friday, Saturday, Sunday there. So temperatures are plummeting. I fully expect anything I have left in the polytunnel to be finally killed off. The last few tomatoes and peppers and things like that, it'll be done for. So I'll keep an eye for that. But I've had a delivery. And look at this. This came from DT Brown, and I should add, it was perfectly packaged before the postman tried to push it into my post box and burst all the bag open. So DT Brown did package this absolutely perfect, and I'm not affiliated with them anyway whatsoever. I just buy stuff from them every now and again. And what do I have in here? Let me get them out. We've got some garlic, and I'll come to this in a wee second there. And... We've got some onions, which I'm going to overwinter. So we'll start doing them over here in just a minute. But a couple of things to tell you about these. First of all, the onions. Now I've never, that I remember, overwintered onions. So I thought, you know what? Let's just give them a try. I think I ordered these all the way back in like August or something like that, when I was ordering some other seeds. And I saw a special offer, get your winter onions and garlic. And I thought, you know what? Let's buy some, let's give them a try. And these are a particular type called Senshu, and I believe these sort of Japanese kind of onions are brilliant for doing over the winter. Now, normally I grow my onions from seed. I had great success with them last year, but I'm gonna do some of these sets over winter. I will do the normal ones from seed when we get towards the other side of Christmas. Yes, I mentioned the seed word. We are getting a little bit close, but yeah, after Christmas, we'll do the ones from seed, but just now we're gonna get the sets on the go and they will over winter. And the garlic, I've got two bulbs of garlic here, and this is a particular type called Checkmate White that is only available from DT Brown. Now, I get my garlic from two different places. One is DT Brown, and one is the Isle of White Garlic Farm. And this one is only available at DT Brown. So I thought, you know what? It's on special offer with the onion sets. Why not give them a shot? So we'll, we'll give them a shot. There's a couple of different stages to getting these sorted, but I'm just gonna pop them out here now. And then I'll maybe do another follow-up video onto that because I'll have to prep the beds and we'll put them out over the plot and we'll do a follow-up to this one in a few weeks' time. Anyway, let me get you switched around and we'll get to cracking with these. Right, I'm back and we've got one of the, the bulbs of garlic here. And, you know, there's, there's lots of mixed opinions out there on YouTube, on the internet in general and books and whatnot as to whether, whether you should put your garlic in, in, in the sort of the cell trays or whether you should just... Stick it in the ground, and you know what? I've done both ways. And you know what? It doesn't really make much difference. It seems to work both ways. I've had good garlic from just putting it in the ground, and I've had good garlic from starting off in sale trays. And I think, I, I always remember, remember our old friend Steve, God rest his soul, from, from Greenside Upward. I remember he made a comment once that we, we were chatting about um, people chitting potatoes. And there's always that argument about 
potato chitting and should you chit your potatoes or not? Does it make a difference? And I remember Steve saying that sometimes chitting potatoes is one of those things that gardeners do at a particular time of year just to be busy and just to be doing something. And I think putting the onion sets and the cloves of garlic in cell trays is very much one of those things where I'm just doing it to be a bit busy, to have something on the go at the allotment, to have something to do in the garden, because at this time of year, apart from a lot of tidied up and a lot of weeds that are left over from the summer that need sorting out, there's not like millions of stuff to do the allotment. There's some stuff, you can probably see some plants I've got back here, they're, they're, they're gonna grow out soon, but again, they'll, they'll grow really slowly over winter and there's not like, loads and loads of stuff to do because they don't need water and all the time because god knows it rains often enough up here over the well over the past few weeks it's rained often enough up, up here never mind over winter so we'll we'll see but yeah it's, it's just something to do and you can nurture them you can look after them you can get them on the go and whatnot and i've and i've managed to drop a couple of the cloves into the cells on the cell tray just to make things a little bit awkward and all I'm doing let me just show you this a little bit closer to the camera as I've seen some people as well they're right faff with garlic and they, they go to the nth degree with how you peel it off and they'll get these little bits off the top and they'll do something with this bit at the bottom and all I do is peel off all this sort of papery kind of outer layer <clears throat> and then I'll use the the cloves as they are with this bit on the top this bit on the bottom Nature always finds a way, the roots will find a way to push their way out of there and the shoots will find a way to push up out the top over there. So that's all I do, I just take off that sort of outer kind of papery layer off the garlic and I'm just going to collect it. You see this seems like a good idea at the time, you might not be able to see it so well there. Is I just pile the cloves on top of the compost and it seemed like a good idea at the time but now that I've come to use the compost it's not the best idea I've ever had. But let me just move the cell tray out of the way. And the compost I've got here is just multi-purpose. Where's the bag gone down there? miracle Grow compost that I picked up from the garden centre. It's got a little bit of perlite mixed into it and it's got loads of vermiculite mixed into it because I ran out of perlite so I had to use the vermiculite. And there's a, I want it to be quite a quite a loose mix, which is why I've got the the vermiculite, or preferably perlite, but mix it in there, and it's been through the sieve, and it's got about a, probably a five millimeter sort of gap on the sieve. I don't know what the correct term is for that in the, in the sieve. Let me show you, look at what the sieve down here. Holes, I don't know what the correct, is there, a, is there a technical term for the holes in the sieve? I don't know if there is or not, anyway. The holes, or whatever you want to call them, are about five mils I reckon in, in size and the compost has been through that and that gets rid of all the lumps and bumps and I am using my good old friend the iron brew bottle here to wet the compost and I'm doing that because I don't want to have to water the onions and the garlic afterwards so I don't want the compost getting really 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 wet because it's quite easy to rot garlic the onions, the onions aren't quite so delicate, but speaking, speaking from experience, I, I could never confirm nor deny that this is something I may or may not have done in the past. And that is, you know, I've, I've got a little bit of a history now of, of overwatering things after the, the tomato catastrophe over the, over the spring and summer there. That may have overwatered some garlic in the past and it's gone a bit rotten and a bit fusty. And it's quite easy to do, I think, with the garlic. So the, the compost is getting a light watering before it goes into the cell tray. And I'm not gonna water it at all after that until I start seeing it growing. So this is the cell tray I'm using. It's one of the container-wise ones. I think these are the Hugh Richards branded ones. There's 10 cells on each side, sort of split down the middle. It's just for the size of it that I'm using it, for no other reason than that. This is just about the right size to be using to get the garlic on the go. And not long, to be fair, I just want them to get a bit of a decent, decent root system and some shoots at the top. 
and we'll probably be looking to transfer them outside not too long after that. I'm not going to sort of keep them in here till they're absolutely massive because again I, I can neither confirm nor deny that I might have been guilty in the past of trying to get the garlic and things too big before I put it out and you know it gets all sort of root bound in the little cell trays and it, it all goes a bit a bit funny so I, I am intending to get this just right this year I'm uh, intending I am I'm not I'm not committing to, to actually doing it and, and saying 100% I will, will achieve that outcome. I'm just going to hope that I get these just at the right time. And I don't know, hopefully I've got the camera set up quite right here. I'm probably pushing these cloves about, I don't know, about half to three quarters of the way into the cell tray to kind of get them on the go. And just out of interest, that was... Is that, what, is that just one? I was wondering if that was just one clove, and it is, it's just one giant clove in there. So that's a, it's funny how in the garlic, sometimes you get massive cloves, and other times you get tiny little ones, but they'll all, they'll all grow the same. They'll all grow in a nice, big, lovely garlic. And just out of interest for you there, out of that sort of one bulb of garlic that I got from DT Brown there, we have got... 12 individual cloves, so if all goes according to plan, those 12 individual cloves will grow into 12 bulbs of garlic. But that's how they look, you can see there, how I've got them pushed in. Just try and get them at the right, the right angle, so you can see there, they're about half to three quarters of the way in, like I said before. And that's as easy as that, and they're just going to sit in the greenhouse for the next couple of weeks, sort of cooking away there, doing the thing. And I'll do, I'll do the, second, the second bulb there off camera because you don't need to see me sort of doing that same thing again and we've got this for the onions again the cell tray came from container wise are about the same size cells it's just a slightly different format it hasn't got that sort of 10 by 10 sort of split into and i must admit i, I watched some of hugh richard's stuff on on youtube i don't know the fella i've never met him he has loads and loads and loads of subscribers certainly compared to me he does he must be doing something right but i am i am a big fan of those cell trays the the sort of ones that have got 10 cells either side and split in two because it's great for doing stuff in where you might have the same sort of crop but different varieties or you may have different crops but you're not doing like loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of them it's just you know it's just a really good size for the sort of the way I work or the way I do the the plants, the crops, the seedlings, whatever you want to call them. It's just a good size. And I'm a big fan. I think I've said, you know, if you've seen me doing this sort of stuff before, these these container-wise ones, they're a bit expensive to buy in the first instance. But you know what? Because it's sort of the thicker, more solid plastic, they're going to last for years and years and years, unlike those other sort of... The, you know what I mean, the flimsy, I don't know if I've got any, I've got probably got some somewhere. The flimsy plastic ones that sort of, you'll maybe get a season or two if you're lucky out of them and they will probably fall apart after you. They'll start to crack and they get problems with them and whatnot. So, pretty much much of a muchness with the onion sets. And these onion sets are, you see what they look like? They're not giant, they're not tiny, but you know what? They are in lovely condition and I'm going to do... Pretty much what is it was doing with the garlic, and I'm just going to push them in around about half to three quarters of the way in. And the onions don't take any prep, so I'm, I'm, you know, some of the, the, the sort of little outer skin kind of stuff is, is just coming off there as I'm handling them. But that's nothing to worry about. I'm not doing any of the prep on them, like the garlic, where I sort of peeled off that kind of outer layer of the, the sort of papery stuff. I'm not really doing anything else other than that. But, oops, I'll not throw that one away. But whilst I'm... Oh, man, that's... You know what, I'm pulling that... Because that's still attached. That's why that's pulling out of there. Let's push that in properly. There we go. So whilst I'm pottering away doing this, some of the things that are going to be coming up, I think, in the next couple of weeks. Now that I'm back doing videos and things again, now that I'm back in the, the land of the living, I'm uh, in not, not in London, that's for sure. Um, 
what have we got? I've got some, I ordered some green manure seeds, some, some, like just a general winter green manure mix. I tried green manure once years ago when I didn't really know what I was doing and it didn't work very well and didn't germinate very well. But, you know, I like to think after, after a couple of years, I've maybe learned a couple of things and perhaps a little bit more savvy. So I've got the potatoes in the ground that need to come up. And once they come up, I'm probably going to green manure the beds that they're in. I've got a pumpkin to pick that I've grown for Robbie's Halloween and we'll green manure that. I might just do the two beds with green manure. They're the sort of traditional beds that I've got left that, that I dig as opposed to the sort of no dig ones. I don't know. Anybody know? Leave me in the comments to use green manure in no dig beds because I guess you're then going to chop it down and dig it in which kind of defeats the purpose of no dig, doesn't it, if you're digging something in. Um, but anyway, if you, if you happen to know the answer, please leave it in the comments down below. We've got the rest of the polytunnel to harvest, the stuff in there. There's the chilies to pick, there's the Carolina Reapers, and I haven't quite decided if I'm going to be brave enough yet to try one of them out. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes, and I've got all this stuff to put out, and there's some other projects that are going to be on the go over the winter, just to kind of get stuff done. But there you go, let me show you these as well. So that's, that looks oh, that looks lovely. I think this this might be a little Instagram picture. We really like the way this this looks. For those of you who do Instagram, please look me up. It is at Marks and Plot on Instagram. I'm a little bit quiet. I'm not very good at Instagram. I'm a little bit quieter on there than I am on YouTube. And that's somebody saying that who hasn't put a video out for two weeks. So please go along and have a look and have a look. And you might see lovely little pictures like this because I think it looks beautiful when it's all set out like that. And we'll have the garlic alongside it as well. And that looked tremendous. But that is all I am doing for today. So we've got the onions in there. Remember, the important thing about them is the variety, which is the senshu ones, those Japanese ones that are really frost tolerant, can withstand those low temperatures and will go out over the winter. The garlic, which is Checkmate Right, which is a, a new, unique variety that we got from DT Browns that we're trying for the first time. I will be doing some more garlic. I'll probably plant that the other side of Christmas as well. Same with the onions, other side of Christmas and everything else in here. You can have a lovely look at it there whilst I'm here. But anyway, please think about liking and subscribing. If you want to subscribe, it's absolutely free. I think there's a little red button or something appears down below that you can click that helps you to subscribe. And you can see whether these things turn out all right or whether they're a load of junk. And I will follow this video up with another video on these in a couple of weeks' time, again, with that bed prep and the stuff going out. But that is very much me done for today. Thank you very much for watching, folks. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.